Welcome to episode 133 of the Concealed Taco Dudes podcast. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So today, why, do we, why are we so entertained by ourselves when I don't we know. do that? It's, it's great. It, it, it pumps up the listener for the awesome conversation that we're about to have. So today, tonight we have me, Taco. And I'm Evan. Jason with Concealment Solutions. And Evan is my buddy from the Full Ed Taco YouTube channel. So he's the guy who is always so shooting. he's pertinent. Yes, yes, <laughs> useful, useful, <laughs> relevant, pertinent, all of the above. All of the above. And since uh, Stan, you know, he didn't want to show up, and Gene, you know, he's busy with that moving thing. Yeah. And Ricky, I don't know his what his excuse. He's MIA. MIA. <laughs> so we are glad to have Evan here, and maybe we should make Evan like a a full time sure. cast member. But Just drag uh, me in. Just drag him all the way from where your house is. Five minutes away. <laughs> so, are you only about five minutes away? Yeah, it's not bad. It's like five or ten minutes. Oh, okay. That's, That's why right. I always come down here and bug out. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And we are in... Back the, in the studio. <laughs> NOE Studios. It, so. It's been forever since we've been it in the studio. It has been a while. So, back to the good sound quality, hopefully. Yeah. As long as uh, Jason doesn't kick the mic or tap his foot on it or, you know... <laughs> <laughs> or <coughs> I was gonna say, if you guys hear a loud bang, it's probably because I kicked the leg. Yeah, I've already done it once or twice. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's jump right into our sponsors. Get that knocked out of the way. Let's do it. NoEBulletMolds.com, the best makers of the best bullet molds on the planet. That's a lot of bests. It is. They are the best. <laughs> and good customer service. Great I've customer broke, service. I've broke molds and been in very stupid ways, and Al's fixed them for me. Nice. That is very kind of Al. <laughs> yeah. So one of the products that Al has listed, he has a few new products. If if you haven't signed up for his newsletter, then you should, because yeah. there were, I think, 18 models of molds or something like that. New that ones? New ones. Or ones that Just they had runs. run yeah. and are now in stock. So if there's something you've been waiting for, uh, go ahead and check the, the site. You it might be, be there. You can be the first to know if you're on the newsletter. Yeah, you can be the first. <laughs> well, the good thing, too, is he doesn't spam you with newsletters. You only get them yeah. when there's something to say. Yeah. yeah. That's what I really appreciate about and, it. And if you're local, he has some good powders here. I saw <laughs> uh, some powders that I might have to go and uh, <laughs> leave, order a couple. Like Leave a quarter behind. Yeah. <laughs> Lever Evolution. Taco Fairy came. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, that's a good one. That's good for the 3030 and as, as well as some of the newer cartridges like the 6 Arc. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, it's turned out to be a really good powder for that and get a uh, quite a bit of velocity over some of the other powders. Very so, cool. Yeah. So use coupon code FLT001 and it'll save you 10%. Yep. Utah Air Guns. Our Mac is coming. Oh, is it? Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge is, soon is next that? month. Oh, next month. I can't remember the exact date. Hopefully I'm not in the mountains during that time. <clears throat> yeah. I went last year. It was super fun to just be an observer and watch. Just it. walk around and Super see. well organized, and they, they do a great job. And there's like, you can win $20,000 for winning one... One, one event or event. something. Yeah. That's 20 awesome. grand. I can't remember how much they gave away last year total, but it was a crap ton of money, and it's more this year. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I haven't been able to do, like, a ton of shooting. Like, I, well, I did go shooting, like, last week or a something. A bajillion times. But, but yeah, <laughs> the uh, when you feel like you aren't shooting enough, yeah. air guns are a great way to go. You yeah. You usually shoot in your backyard or something. Yeah. So. Yeah. I use, haven't even had time to do that lately. Yeah, so, you know, go ahead, use coupon code AIRCANDY, Air candy. and yep. it'll save you, you on shipping. Free, free shipping and you get turret, turret stickers. stickers. Yep, go check out Utah Air Guns. And then Magholder, yep. magholder.com. So he is taking pre-orders on Glock 45 and 10 millimeter magazine, or mag holders. People so have been Glock waiting 45, a very like long time. 45 ACP yeah. Glocks? Yeah. Okay, so there's a Glock 45 oh, and it's yeah. 9 millimeter, I yeah. think so. No. You know, just to clarify that. that that's a good clarification. So yeah. 45 double, ACP. Double stack 45 ACP and 10 millimeter magazines. Ooh. Um, fat. It's probably going to fit 
and I don't know this for sure. You'll have to jump on his website to see. Um, but it'll probably fit like uh, the FN forty five tactical oh, that, and that stuff big like chunky that. Monkey, yeah. yeah. All right. So it's probably going to fit a few few others. Hopefully the uh, the Springfield ten millimeter. I yeah. would be partial to that one. But yeah, uh, yeah. check him out at magholder.com. Use coupon Use, code. Get in the van. I have candy. And it'll save you a or give you a significant it's like, it's discount. It's like twenty percent, or it Stuff might like even that. be more than that. I don't remember. I think it's last time good. I checked, it was two twenty two point two or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that was Mark. He liked his odd odd codes and, and odd numbers. Numbers. Yeah. All right. Black Ice Coatings. Yes. BlackIceCoatings.com. I still need to take my. I think I was going to take the Hog Hunter down. Oh yeah. Yeah, have him do that one. Flying pigs. Flying pigs. Nice. Some pigs on the hog hunter. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but I've been shooting 308 quite a bit lately. Yeah. And so I, I haven't wanted to not have my 308 bolt gun. Yeah. So, and I still, Evan and I are still going to do some zinc 308 bullet shooting. Yeah. So we just, nice. so I, I don't know if I can give up my, my hog hunter yet. Maybe I'll do it right before like a family reunion or scout camp or something. I need to take in my, uh, my P10C. I want to have him do the slide. Mm, okay. So Teflon or Cerakote? Or no, what? I think I'm going to just Cerakote it. Just It needs to be different because my son has the exact same gun. Oh, yes. Okay. And See, I, I just picked up a P07. Oh, nice. Because I couldn't get a P10. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the P10 better than the P07. They're both was, good guns. I was surprised at how big the P07 was because I thought the P10... I can only imagine how big the P10 is compared to after holding a P07. It's, P10 is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's Block like, 19 size, but yeah. it has a slimmer feel. The P10C. I the have P10 the P10C. P10F. Right. And it is not small. No, yeah. it is not. It's and it's I big. love that. It God. still feels <laughs> slim though. Yeah, the grip does. Yeah. And it gives you a close uh, L- real grip low on the board. Bore yeah, low bore and, axis. So. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. shoots so nice. Oh, I know. I, I haven't know. been able to shoot mine yet. <laughs> hey, let's go. Let's go shoot. What I we, what we I should do shot is mine yet either. <laughs> we got We got to do some like nine mil zinc loads so we get those things coming out at like two thousand feet per second or something. <laughs> That'd be like That'd be a, su- a super velocity nine millimeter nice. load, something like that. Nice. Anyway, check out Black Ice Coatings at blackicecoatings.com. Give them a call, arrange to get whatever coated, and tell them you want it slickery. Yes. And then Concealment Solutions at ConcealmentSolutions.com. Your one-stop holster shop. Yeah. It's... Uh, and I, holsters for your knives. Yeah, knife sheaths. Knife sheaths. I've been making a lot of... Well, I shouldn't say a lot. I, I posted on Instagram and Facebook. A guy sent me a... Or brought in his Leatherman that he wanted a carrier for, and oh, he yeah. wanted a, he had this little flashlight that he carries, a little streamlight flashlight. Oh, so like a double holder for And both. he wanted that on it, too. So I, I basically made him a modified Venom mag carrier uh-huh. that the Leatherman fits in and then bolted the flashlight carrier onto the, onto the back of it so it sits real tight. It yeah. worked, turned out really good. As soon as I posted it, I got a message from somebody... Okay, I need one of those. How much? <laughs> what do I need to do? I just got his stuff. And he he wants, he's got a, a Leatherman tool, a flashlight, and pepper spray. So oh, I'm like, so it's a triple thing. So I got I to gotta rethink this. He wants a couple. And, mm. he, and I think he wants to be able to add or take away the pepper spray. So I got to think about this one a little bit. But okay. it's it'll, it'll come together. So if you got st- weird stuff like that that you're like, Oh, this would be the perfect setup for me. I yeah. could probably make something you for know you. Be, what would be cool is, yeah, I might, I might bring something by. <laughs> you should like make some my suppressor holsters. Well, because I, yeah. you know, I got that stuff coming. <laughs> suppressor holster. That'd be, awesome. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna pop on this one. <laughs> you, can just have, you can have all your suppressors there, so that when we yeah, go shoot, it's like go all the way around you. <laughs> the Batman utility yeah. belt, like the suppressors, <laughs> and a Leatherman. Yeah, <laughs> there you, know, you uh, go. No, I was going to say the our scout camp or the young men's week-long camp out is coming up. Yeah. And I was thinking it'd be cool to have something like that for one of my, like, super bright flashlights. Oh, yeah. Have that on there. My Leatherman for fishing. Yeah. And then, well, probably just that. But yeah. those two things would be would be kind of cool to have. Yeah, yeah. I clip, can make clip you on something. the belt, something like that. For sure. Yeah. And I will say today I am sporting 
I didn't want to shove anything in my pants when I left <laughs> the house today, so I'm carrying uh, not concealed. I'm open carrying with my drop leg holster with my big fat revolver on Cobra there. Cobra drop leg. Is yeah. that the, your eight shot? My eight shot, like 357. That. I like yeah. that gun. It's it's a good shooter. I like that, that's a revolver I would own. Yeah. So, anyways, shout out to to Concealment Solutions yeah. for making a, an awesome drop leg. I've been I've been making a lot of drop legs lately. It really is a good like hiking holster or They just they just work really well yeah. and they're comfortable no matter what you're doing. Sitting, standing, getting in and out of a vehicle, yeah, yeah. they move with you. Anyway, jump on concealmentsolutions.com, use the code AIRCANDY. And you'll get a pretty significant discount, and I throw in some swag for you as well. All right. Uh, let's let's do some listener feedback. All right, let's hop on to the listener feedback. We have, I think, four of them. And so Dave W., <coughs> he, he kind of got lucky because he wrote this in today, and we're recording today. But Dave W. was wondering... Is Mr. Listener feedback. Nigh <laughs> invulnerable, progressing nicely? He's wondering about Carl. And I think Carl is back to work now. He and is. He's not driving with Stan anymore. I talked to Carl. Yeah, they're not doing like last the, week. the team driving. Like no, that. Carl's Carl's doing a day shift. Mm-hmm. So he's at home every day. Yeah, Stan night. too. And Is Stan I, doing the same? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So I've, I've talked to Stan a little bit. We were doing some bulk bullet buy-in. And oh, nice. So... Got yeah, some stuff going on. but but he, Carl continues to improve. His He's, extra hole is gone, right? Yes, he only has one butthole now, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that is good news. That is good news for everybody. Yes, but uh, yeah, he's getting stronger. His his lungs are still the weak. Is he still on oxygen? Yeah. Okay. At uh, at least Ish. at night, I know he is. Um, and, he, and he's working on getting off of that. Okay. But yeah, he's he's improving all the time. All right. And Kevin C. writes in and he says, another great story time, Jason. Woohoo! And I, I, have to, I gave Jason my kudos before starting the podcast that I really enjoyed it. I... I guess I I never I've never heard of Audie Murphy. I hadn't either, and I and I felt like a bad person right? after reading. I'm like, how come everybody like a, doesn't know about yeah, this guy? Yeah, he's like a crazy war hero and yeah. became an actor. So and... yeah, you need to watch the movie to Helen back. It's not. It doesn't meet the standards of today's war movies because of the the acting is different. Just the style, yeah. everything is different. Obviously, special effects are different. But just to see him, because it's him playing himself. Yeah. And I can't imagine, can't imagine doing that. And just imagine the PTSD oh, yeah, and, and reliving ex- your worst memories. You know, your buddies getting killed. And anyway, he he. It's worth watching. Uh, I would maybe read the book first and then watch the movie, and it, it, it kind of puts everything into perspective. But, yeah, that was that was a good one. The two books together, I think, worked yeah. very well together. And he, he continues and says, Interesting life story of Audie Murphy. I plan oh. to look uh, forward to Helen back for tonight's, tonight's movie. movie. So he's, yeah, good. Yeah. Hope, hope you watched it. Kevin C., if you, if, if you if did, did watch it. Tell us what you yeah, thought about the us, movie. And where you found feedback. it, because nobody else is going to be able to find it. I got it at the local library. Really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Provo Library has it. Cool. It is, it is a classic. Yeah. You know, because of the because of the content, because of yeah. what it is and who it is and stuff like that. But. All right, and Jason T., he writes in and says, Hey, I got a question for Gene Tessier. I can't seem to find his email address again, so thought if I reach out to you guys, the message will get uh, somewhere in the right direction. He Except says, Gene's not here today. <laughs> I know. It's too bad. I was hoping Gene would be here. He was hoping to be here. He is in town, but he's buttoning things up at his old house. So uh, he says, I have a Desert Eagle 357, 44, and 58 Action Express, and I was wondering if Gene could machine the 357 barrel and make an an insert or thread adapter. My barrel has a built-in muzzle brake, so I was thinking it could be bored out and threaded to accept an adapter where I can screw a can on. I knew the ports would not give the best thread engagement, so that might have to be filled in with weld either or after insert or was installed. I also have a Jericho 941 that I'd like to have a, a, the barrel sleeved. He likes a, the Israeli stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, and a thread adapter added to that as well. I know how you like, he's talking to me, how you like strange stuff so you might know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll ask Gene. I don't know if Gene does It almost that sounds stuff. like it, he'd be money ahead to just buy a new barrel and get it threaded. Yeah, th- but, those are hard to find. Yeah. They make or have made some, they look really ugly, but these <laughs> long barrel, yeah, the desert eagle barrels, oh. and you can actually cut those. Where and, the barrel sticks those. out really far yeah, out it's like the a, slide. It's like a, what, 10 like inch or nose. like 12 inch? Or, yeah, it, it looks huh. like an elephant. It looks so dumb. But <laughs> if you can get something like that and then cut and thread, I know that that is a possibility because yeah. I've seen uh, a couple of people do that. I, I think I would go that route rather than welding and filling in stuff and yeah yeah your sense of adventure yep (laughs) okay and matt h there just not there not financially there (laughs) there you go matt h writes in and he says tell carl they finally made a gun for his stature and he had a link to the firearm blog where the walther pdp f series woman's hands so (laughs) oh i had a, a pdp f series in the shop last week does it have is it built for women's hands I, it felt Did good it feel, in my yeah, hands. Yeah, <laughs> Did it feel good in your hands, Jake? And, and it Soft was a woman's gun. Yeah. It. You know what? I haven't been super crazy about the PDP. The triggers are really pretty decent. I just, the slides are so big and chunky, and they have got, like, quarter-inch deep serrations in them. Mm. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, really? They're ridiculous. And it just makes them big and clunky kind of feeling a little bit. But that one seemed... It's the same way, but it's uh, the barrel's a little bit shorter. They do have a really low uh, bore axis, which is nice. It's not a bad feeling gun. I haven't shot it, obviously, but um, the F series it, it felt pretty good. I, I I don't know if it felt slimmer than the other ones, but so for the gun noobs, uh, what does it mean to have a low bore axis? So a low bore axis means it's the opposite of the old school SIGs. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's very true. Six, the old school SIGs, the P226, the yeah, 229. Oh, they're so bad. They have the, yeah, they're really top yeah. heavy. <laughs> Basically, it's like but how they're close. they're still awesome. <laughs> how close your hand gets to the, the, the axis barrel. of the barrel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so CZs are really good. They, yeah. they have real low profile slides. And, um, and the grip and the grip higher. goes up real high. Yeah. It usually is is got a really good undercut, like almost a beaver tail, yeah. without Isn't having a beaver tail. The, the alien that someone just made recently, this really 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 low bore axis. It's like the barrel's in line with your hand, basically. The yeah. recoil springs up top. Really. So and and why oh. why is that a benefit? It helps you control recoil. Yeah, because instead of flipping your hand up, yeah. it's pushing your hand back. Yeah. And it puts the force more into into the into palm it. of your hand yeah. instead of above it. So, but all yeah. right, okay, and then uh, that's it for listener feedback. Okay, let's move into what we did with guns since okay. it's been so like so long since we. I will go first because I have something that's pertinent to what we just talked about. Okay, I had a gun come through the shop that I have never even heard of before. So I I offer holsters for it's it's right about 250 different gun models. Oh, nice. So and, and people come into my shop and see them all hanging on my walls and like you have everything ever made and I'm like <laughs> I'm like every week somebody asks me for something I don't have, you know. And this one was just weird and it came from our friend Antonio. Oh. <laughs> Which one was that? It, it wasn't his. It, I don't know if it was a friend of his or a family member or whatever. He's like, hey, I need a holster for this gun. You know, I'll, I'll have it so you can use it. And I'm like, well, what is it? Maybe I probably have it. He's like, you don't have this. <laughs> it's an FK Bruno. <laughs> oh. Okay. Do you guys know what that yeah, is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 75. Yeah. I'd never heard of one, never seen one. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. It had a great big light on it, too. I, I put pictures of that on Instagram and Facebook also. So what so kind of holster see, did he go with? Just a, just a Cobra, just outside the waist. Okay. But it, it it almost looked like, and I can't remember, was it a Henderson that has an integrated suppressor in it so that it's like the, the frame of the gun below the slide's like kind of thick. Oh, uh, okay. This You're is, talking about the Silencer Co. one? 
Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. I can't remember. There was some other company before Silencer Co. that came out with a pistol that was internally suppressed. I, maybe I'm confusing them. I don't remember. There, there was one that had a big old fat on the bottom, but it was yeah. they were making like the 1911, uh, the, but then they went out of business. Yeah. Anyway, Every, everyone yeah. who does it, that goes this, out of business. This, the FK Bruno, it comes out of, I think, the Czech Republic, if I'm correct. Somewhere overseas. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's similar to that, but it's not suppressed. It's not internally suppressed. It has a some funky internal recoil mechanism. I don't know. But it's it was kind of goofy looking. And, and the best way I can describe it is if HK and CZ had a baby, <laughs> you would get an FK Bruno. <laughs> because the slide has a really low bore axis. The slide looks like a CZ slide. It's really low profile like that. And the grip and the polymer and the texturing on it I swear is HK and oh so you had you had you had the polymer one yeah that's their newest model that came out that's yeah the affordable one at like three grand I think or I two think grand. I think they're about two yeah <laughs> two or three grand. they're 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 nice one or the expensive the, the one all is, steel one yeah it's like five or six yeah. thousand something like that it's crazy yeah they're they're kind of cool and I guess they're they're built so that they can be multi caliber you can watch out switch out calibers really easy and stuff like that so i mean it's kind of cool but not for not for two grand or five well, the, grand the, the, or the one thing that's cool about them is the the round that they can shoot the seven five burno yeah that's what this yeah this, this one was changing so you, you swap out the, the 10 millimeter barrel right only because it's affordable right <laughs> that's quote. that's affordable yeah, yeah because the seven five burno it's like i can't remember i think it's like a 50 grain bullet and it's something like 2700 feet per second but it's it's almost like a little rifle car so it's kind of like yeah. a 22 tcm ish yeah but it's like a bigger bullet i can't like, remember if, if it's, it's seven like, five it's like a 30 cal right yeah so it's a pretty big bullet and i i i want to say it's going over 2,000 feet per second but huh. they'll use it for like deer hunting and stuff oh really hmm. yeah that's cool anyway this is kind of a cool gun it wasn't something that i have seen before <laughs> i've never seen or heard of it before and after after you know playing with it in the shop it's like yeah you know trigger's okay reset's okay you know there wasn't anything that got me excited about it other than oh this is interesting it felt well built yeah you know um other than that uh my 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 kind of new shooter customer that i helped build his first ar came back with it because he wanted help putting a drop-in trigger in it so we we did that what trigger did he go with i can't remember it 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 was a few weeks ago honestly Uh, um i I don't remember what it was but shout out to timney i put in a timney yeah in one of my ars i I have cmc's i got some davidson's i got some just a variety of triggers Uh man that timney feels really good yeah how (laughs) how does it it compare price wise to the other ones I got it on sale through a good deal, and I only spent like about a hundred bucks. So, oh, so, so on par or it, better? It wipes the floor with all the other triggers at that price point. Nice. But is it, is it a drop in or is it? It is a drop in, but okay. it doesn't use like the anti walk pins. Right. And so you actually there's like a set screw that pushes it up against the pin, so it doesn't the pin doesn't walk. Huh. It's, it's pretty interesting. So it's their own Installation is kind of like uh, it wasn't too difficult once I figured out what had to be done. Yeah. But it it was annoying at first. Is it? But it feels so good. It was worth it. Trigger's good. <laughs> nice. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's about all I've done. I haven't pulled a trigger really on anything for weeks. Yeah. So Evan, you you got to do a couple of things recently yeah i'm trying to remember everything i've done i I helped my brother build his first ar i helped the guy who moved here from california build his ar nice and how to clean his ar (laughs) i originally told him to use some soap and water just as a joke (laughs) oh no (laughs) i mean i've used i've used soap and water to clean my barrels or to clean my guns before so it's not it's not that bad it's not ideal though no (laughs) yeah it's not ideal but like that's what i had and so he, he didn't he didn't actually clean it with soap and water. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, <laughs> so he came over to my house with his just shake some flies. Ajax was down it, the barrel. Like wondering what the cheapest way to do it, and then you told yeah, him soap yeah. and water. I was like, here's the cheapest way. I, and so I linked him the Paul Harrell video where he cleans his AR-15 with soap and water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. He uses no. He uses soap and water in 409. That's what it was. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, Interesting. 
then he came over with his cleaning supplies and they had all leaked out so he didn't have any cleaning supplies so we just used mine but it was a lot of fun and then um i've done a bunch of other stuff but the other thing that was exciting is i went and got to shoot a match in price oh was nice. that uh, was that your first match it was the first match I ever shot. What kind was what it? What kind of match was it? It was just a black rifle match is what they called it. Okay. So you could bring like an AR, you could bring an AK, you could bring whatever you wanted. They as even long, had some as long stuff as it was up. evil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as it was evil. And they, they even had stuff set up so people could do uh, PCCs. And so one guy, oh. one guy brought a PCC. Okay. <laughs> but it's because his AR that he was loading for, his, uh, his uh, die broke. Oh. Uh, he had one of those Lee APP presses, and he was using it to swage. Okay. And he broke the swager or something. I can't remember what he did. So he only had nine mil to shoot. <laughs> yeah. Those but, those little APP presses are impressive for certain things, but man, they feel so cheap yeah, and like yeah. chintzy because they have a lot of plastic and really thin aluminum. And the, the parts that on my first gen one it, that were steel. Are now aluminum so it feels mm. even i have two of those yeah i use them specifically for bullet sizing and they i love you i love them for bullet sizing yeah but i don't use them for anything else <laughs> so i've been using mine to swage the primer pockets and it works pretty good if you can get it set right so i, I don't even know what he did to break it <laughs> <laughs> so it's just so tell us about this match what yeah what oh. were the stages like and how many were there what distances had... They had six stages. The stages ranged from 10 yards to 400 yards. Wow. The majority of the stages were between, like, the 10 and 100 yards. Okay. And then there was one stage where they had still at, like, it was, like, 250, 300, and 400 or something like that. And and ha what, what was the scenario for the stages? What, 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 what was the course of fire? So for the long, well, well, all of them were different, of course, right? Yeah. But, you know, most of them were, if it's a cardboard target, you have to shoot twice to, to neutralize unless you get an A zone hit, then it's only one shot. And then still, it's usually just one hit on still. Yeah. Well, that, that was fun. The, the long range one that I had fun with was shooting this rifle that I've got. It's got a little 1X, you know, primary arms, whatever it is. Uh, little red dot. Well, it's their, it's their prism scope. It's their little right, uh, 1X prism scope. I don't know if you've ever looked through one of these, right? I don't know that I have. But it's got their oh, okay. shake awake on it, so it's got like 50,000 yeah. battery hour life yeah. on it. And, you know, shooting this, I was thinking that I would just get, you know, my teeth kicked in by everybody else using optics. Uh huh. And I was connecting, you know, two or three shots to hit the still with this 1X scope, and there was guys with, you know, 10 and 12X scopes that would empty mags. <laughs> <laughs> Those so. guys did not practice or yeah, yeah. Did check, they... check their dope. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think felt, sometimes, yeah. it, and especially we were something, because you're running against the clock, I assume. Yeah. I think sometimes a simpler setup like that, especially if you're going to, to multiple different ranges in one stage, a red dot or something like that is way faster if you're familiar with it. Yeah. If yeah. it's like, if hey, I know I know where it's zeroed in, and I know if I'm going out that far, I know what my holdover needs to be and stuff like that. I think, so, I think you can get that was my faster. First, that was my first match shot. Yeah. And that was my first time shooting this rifle and my first time with this scope. Wow. <laughs> so oh, was like, how did you do? Well, so that 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 um, stage that I was just talking about was actually what undid me okay. because I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to the still the whole time. Uh-huh. And there was a bunch of cardboard targets. Oh. <laughs> so I brought two mags with me and I ran out of ammo when I got to the third the third third section of the stage. Yeah. And so I got timeouts on all the targets. Uh, so I went from like being like in the fifteenth all the way down to like in the twentieth. Uh, that's all right. But but that's that's the way matches go. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody everybody has at least one stage that they completely blow, <laughs> and it and it'll it'll either completely undo you for the match yeah. or it'll just bump you down a couple of spots. But yeah. I was just ecstatic that I was able to hit the steel at four hundred with a. Frickin' 1x little yeah. prism scope. That's well, nice. and this, this AR-15... is a long it reach. Is, it's pretty cool. It's so lightweight. It's yeah. got the pencil barrel. It's kind of like the What Would Stoner do, like, knockoff. Mine is just under 7 pounds by, like, maybe an ounce. Nice. That's cool. And that's with with the optic and everything on it and a mag, an empty mag. And, and tell us again, what's the, what's the lower... 
This is a, the KP15 lower. This is one of their first gens. I don't know if they're on a the second gen or not, but this is one of their very first ones that came out. And, and it's a polymer. Polymer lower, lower with, with an, an integrated stock. Yeah, it's like kind of like an integrated A2 stock. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. feels good. It does. Yeah, and that, that's what I like about it, right? It's just, it's a nice, lightweight, easy to shoot rifle. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the Viking Tacticals, what is it? The VTAC, like their padded sling on it. So it was comfortable all day. The only complaint I had was like this, the charging handle oh, yeah. dug into my chest. But you know, most of the guys were running plate carriers and if I had been running a plate carrier or a load bearing vest or something like that, then that would have been poking me and it'd been just fine. Just get a side charge upper. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> I actually have one of those for 300 Blackout, my yeah. the Han Solo build we did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I shot that once, and then I was like, I need to get a new grip, because the oh, A2 yeah. grip on it just... Yeah, oh, yeah. the angle's wrong. You, you have to do you like need a, to K2. Get a K2. Yeah. Yep. yeah, speaking of bore axes, that gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how high can we get the bore on this gun? Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. How there many people were one. out there shooting it? We had just about... 27. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah. It was just a laid back match. It was like, it's like a 10 or $30 buy in. There's no prizes. And, you know, they're pretty much like when I ran out of ammo, one of the ROs that runs the match offered me a mag that he had on him so yeah. I could finish the stage. But I felt like that would be cheating, so I didn't take it. But yeah. <laughs> I, that's before I knew that they just didn't care. Otherwise right. I should yeah. take, otherwise, I would have taken the mag. Yeah. So. Well, one thing I've learned is, and it depends on the match, because some of them are like, this is how many rounds you have to complete the, the stage. Yeah. And some of them are, the st you're done with the stage when you hit every target. When, when you're doing matches like that, like a steel challenge or something like that, you need lots of mags. <laughs> <laughs> lots of ammo. You need lots of mags. You know, usually it's like, oh, I got two spares and one in the gun and you're good to go. It's like, no, I need... I need three or four and another one in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the yeah. funny thing. My spare mags were all carried in my back jeans pocket. For that's that whole, awesome. Because I didn't have <laughs> I think that's awesome. Anything. Let me know next time you go do one. I'll get you something. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, they've got one in June. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. Next. Okay. So. All right. Cool. So now it's my turn. I forgot another thing I did. What did you do? I got rid of my Lee Pro 1000. Oh, yeah, Antonio, I was in there, and he... he so, I'm, you gotta, I'm in the pawn shop, because he needed, he needed some other holsters. This was before the, the Bruno, but... Uh, and I'm walking out, and he's got this electric mixer of the... Uh, I don't even remember the brand. Anyway, they're super nice, and I'm like, oh, my what daughter's... No, it's um, a KitchenAid. KitchenAid, oh, the okay. big one. Right? Yeah, so, well, well, this one was the smaller one. This was like the two hundred and fifty dollar one, but that my daughter's been looking for one. She's like, I'm not paying new for it. So, oh, Antonio, what do you want for this? He's like, Well, oh, I've had it forever, and I was thinking like like two hundred bucks. And so I'm texting my daughter. She's like, Well, I can get one at Costco for two fifty. So I'm like, Antonio, she can get one for, at Costco. I said, Oh, well, one fifty. And I said. <laughs> I said, she's bringing you cash, 140 <laughs> So I'm like, great. <laughs> He's like, I got the bigger one back there, too, the the big Pro 600. And I'm like, really? Okay. I'm like, well, she doesn't need that. I'll take this one. And I was telling my wife, I'm like, with that big one? Because I know when I use it, sometimes I max it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I could use a bigger one. <laughs> Make she's more like, cookies? Yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like, well... Yeah, it would be nice to have bringers. It's like, we're not spending the money. We don't need that. And I'm like, okay, this was right before Mother's Day. So when I went and picked up the other one for my daughter, I'm like, dude, I got a reloader. Hardly been used. I'll trade you for this. He's like, okay. He's like, well, what are you thinking? I'm like, dude, just straight across. He's like, all right. <laughs> He's like, I've had these forever. I'm sick of looking at them. Just get it out of here. Nice. So, the, so the wife got a new mixer for Mother's Day, and it didn't cost a dime. Nice. Although now you need to get a reloading press because you, you don't have one. I do. I need to get one that I will use. Yes. Yeah, don't the, get a Lee then. I know. <laughs> you know, the Lee was nice. It was just finicky. Oh, and and for me to reload, it just needs to be, I just Simple. need to sit down and be able to go and not fiddle you, you, with stuff and worry about it. You either need a turret I press. have a turret. I do have a turret okay. press. Or and I and I have used it. Or a Dylan. 
Yeah. The I know. deal, and it's like, once you set it up, it's you just like. You either need the cheapest, simplest one out there or, or the, the most, most expensive. expensive. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I know. The deal, and it's nice. I have it set up right next to my, my well, it's on my reloading bench. But, right. Which I use for work from home. Yeah. So, like, lunch break, I'll just stand up, you know, get Knock a few a reps few in. And, <laughs> and, uh, exercise. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right, my turn. Yep. Okay, so I did some casting this uh, week or this last week. That's and surprising. Yeah, I haven't done any casting for a little bit, yeah. you know, since the zinc bullet stuff. Oh, yeah. And I did some wad cutters. So I got this this uh, bullet mold from NOE like ages ago, and it was a uh, 357 wad cutters in 75 grain, 100 grain, and then 150 grain. Okay. All in one mold. It was. Like, oh, really? It was an old, old group buy. They huh. don't. They don't make and sell these anymore. But it's the one where it has it has like one cavity for each. Yes, one yes. cavity of each size. So, so every every pour you're getting three sizes. Three different sizes. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So if you only want to do one size, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. If you want to do a variety, it's. Cool. Uh, that sounds like the perfect mold for you, who's always screwing around with stuff <laughs> and changing things. Just yeah. Like, you call it the soup can mode. You've got the singles soup can, the couples, and the family. Yeah, you got, <laughs> well, I got my, my tuna fish, and then I got my tomato soup, and then I got my, what, jumbo soup. Chunky, <laughs> yeah, chunky soup. <laughs> so, anyways, I the reason I was doing that is is because I wanted to make some wad cutter ammo for Mark's daughter. Oh, yeah. Because when we were over at the house, yeah. she was talking about how she wanted to shoot fast. Yeah. But she wasn't talking about shooting like velocity fast. She's like, she's I like, want to get behind it and fan the hammer. <laughs> she wanted something <laughs> low recoil that she could shoot fast. Yeah. Like rapidly, I guess. Yeah. Uh huh. So those 75 grainers are going to be like perfect for that. Yeah. They, you, you, I, Antonio, see, you didn't know him back then. Yeah. But he sent me a video because I had made some of those lightweight ones for him because mm-hmm. he wanted something that was just lightweight yeah. for plinking. Yeah. And, he sent me this video where he like holds up a water bottle or a soda bottle and then shoots the lid off and then drinks it. Oh, nice. Because <laughs> there's like s- s- no recoil, right? Yeah. So little recoil from that <laughs> that even with the air weight, it's yeah. super easy. So. Huh. so I made some of those for her. I made 100 of those, like 70. They came out to 72 grains, so 72 grainers. And then I also used a different mold for production. For a lot, it's the Duke, the double-ended wad cutter, oh. D-E-W-C. Okay. And he, Al made one of those uh, in one, was it 106 grain? I so that's what I have. Yeah, and so I just, I I made a bunch of those and then loaded them up for, for Mark's daughter. So she's got 200 nice. rounds of fast shooting ammo. Nice. But, Very uh, cool. I sold again. I sold my no. Ruger, Vaquero, and 45 Colt. Really? But the Bird's Head Halo Edition one. Mm. And the reason I sold it is because it shot to the left, and I'm not talking about pulling the trigger, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> it did not shoot low uh-huh. to the left. But on those Vaqueros, you can't, you can't uh, really change the sights because the sights are built into yeah. the gun. Yeah. Unless you take the... You like get, some pliers, you get your pliers and bend, and bend the, the, the yeah, blade over. I wasn't gonna do that on that that gun, but uh, I ended up making a couple hundred bucks off of it because, well, and I don't know if it's actually making money now that inflation has decreased. Yeah, no kidding. You know the value of our money, but yeah. but I I took that and with that money I bought another gun. You know, still keeping under okay. six net new guns, and the one I got is this Ruger Predator in two two three. Oh, nice! And this one takes AR fifteen Max. Very so, cool. My fault. And this is all Evan's fault. <laughs> so Evan bought one, and he's like, "Hey, yeah, I got this gun, and it's pretty cool." I was like, "Wait, what? It takes AR fifteen Mags, and it's a two two three bolt, and it's threaded, and you know." That's pretty cool. So, and I threw a kind of a fancier than normal scope that I would put on something like this. What is it? It's the it's the five to twenty five PST. Okay. It's a Viper PST. Okay. And uh, the reason I put something kind of nice on it is because I hadn't mounted it on one of my long range guns yet. Yeah. And I figured if guns you shoot a lot deserve good optics. Yeah. Because they have more eye time behind it. Right. Like, like my air gun, 
Yeah. I have that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have a really nice scope on that. Yeah. And uh, but I shoot it the most. So right. Why not have like look through good glass on the guns you shoot most? So uh, I want to know what is that? What did that rifle go for? What'd you get that? It for? was about what, like five hundred bucks. I don't want to talk about what I paid for mine. You, you paid more than me. I right? paid more than he did. Yeah. yeah, I paid more than everybody I told about the gun. <laughs> so it's around five hundred dollars. I was gonna say they're they're a pretty economical gun. Yeah. You used to be able to get them for three hundred fifty bucks. You know, like two years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not that long ago. Yeah, but yesterday. So so here's here's the main reason I got this right. Mm-hmm. I take the scouts or the young men's uh, local church group out mm-hmm. and. We, you know, another thing, what we did with guns, we went out on a camp out and we did rimfire shooting only to introduce, because uh, there were only two boys that had previously shot uh, guns, okay. Noah and then someone yeah. else. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so they, they were really excited to shoot guns and we shot uh, 22 rimfires and 17 HMRs. Okay. And of course I had suppressors to sure. suppress all my guns and everybody else's. Yeah. But uh, I figured the next type of gun we should we would want to shoot is something inexpensive that makes them feel like they're like a sniper, right? Like yeah. Shooting long distance. Yeah. They're, they're going to feel a little more recoil. It's going to be a little, it's well, going to be loud, necessarily but louder yeah, if but you're with the, suppressing yeah, it, but I'll probably suppress it for yeah. them. And so I wanted something that can reach out and touch some steel targets mm-hmm. at, you know, out to about maybe 500 yards is what I want to shoot this out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to like stretch the limits. I was, was going to say that's, yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of pushing its limits anyway. Yeah. And so I figured if I, if I could do that, then we could go out and we can shoot a bunch of 55 grainers, like for, you know, closer targets out to like what, 300 yards is super easy with, with the 55 grain. Mm-hmm. And then maybe shoot some 77 grainers out to, you know, 500 yards. Mm-hmm. But these guys have only shot out to about 100 yards. Yeah. And they felt like, that was they really felt far. like snipers, right? Yeah, yeah. They were shooting some really small targets. Yeah. Uh, they were shooting like shotgun shells out at like, you know, 75 yards nice. and stuff with 22. So that, yeah. was, that was pretty good. Yeah. But if, yeah. if you can hit if you can hit those small targets out at a hundred yards, it's very similar to you know a bigger target. Yeah, that's so a lot further. I figured that that gun is just going to get a lot of use, and I want something, and I want decent optics on it. Yeah. And the fact that it holds or it takes AR-15 mags is just that's super flat out cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Every every that's, bolt I, action. I, should... I might have to look for one of those now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the other gun I built, I finally built my six arc AR-15, and I should probably take a picture of this one. Yeah, you need throw to throw it on Instagram. Who, who did you buy it finished? So that this way? was an Arrow Builder Kit. So oh, okay. it came finished, a uh, matched. Handguard came upper came with lower. the uh, battle worn gold. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I think they called it was it battle worn burnt bronze or something. Probably, yeah. But it looks like gold. It reminds me of Star Wars. Dirty. Yeah, it, looks, <laughs> it does look like Star Wars. Something you'd see in Star Wars, like the gold, shiny gold, but like yeah. a little well, it's bit. Like, it's like, it looks like you've got like a pewter bulk carrier group, right? And oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it looks like an airsoft gun with the red tip on oh. the barrel. <laughs> yeah, I had a, a neighbor came over, and I, show, I was showing it to him. He's he's not he's super into guns, and he's like, oh, is that a one of your air guns? And I was like, oh, no, that's just a thread protector. I haven't decided on which muzzle device I'm going to throw on here. But uh, anyways, yeah, so that was, I'm excited to actually shoot this. I put on one of those bleed-off adjustable gas blocks. The superlative ones? Or? Yep, yep. Yeah. So I'm excited to see how this thing shoots, too. Yeah, we'll have to go take it out. And I did do some loading for the 6-Arc, but unfortunately not for this gun. Mm. I did, because... With the six arc, you have your bolt action loads, yeah, which can go full pressure because you got like a real bolt behind it, right? And then the AR-15 loads, which are a, a lot lower pressure. And so I loaded mine for the bolt action that I have, and I got these uh, 58 grain uh, Hornady varmint bullets. Mm. And they should be going out about 35, 3,500 feet per second those or the, so. The varmint grenade ones that. No, it's. But they're but it's a six millimeter fifty eight grain. So okay. Yeah, they're the ones I got at NPS for like I don't know, it was like ten bucks a box or something, <laughs> something crazy like that. Wow. So I bought all of that, them. That won't happen ever again. Yeah, it will <laughs> never happen again. Too many people know about NPS now. So. Well, yeah. But yeah, and then so I also loaded some 
more nine millimeter and some 223 just you know because i got those dylan's <coughs> set up but i got calls from two different gun shops <laughs> and uh they said they had a few stamps for me to collect mm. so i ended up picking up so i had five five suppressors that got approved and stamps came in and everything and so two of them were these oss 556 cans so the oss that's the uh flow through cans that the gas actually goes through from the yeah they rebranded their their, their hux works now i think oh yeah yeah they, they changed their name but yeah so the the interesting hmm. thing about these is, and I got two of them because they were Gunny's got them on dealer closeout, and so I got them for like five hundred bucks each. Oh, nice! So I just put a, like a hundred down and then paid for a tax stamp. That's what's awesome with Gunny's is you can while you're waiting for your paperwork to get approved, yeah. Then you just you put this layaway stuff, layaway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then since I buy so much stuff there, then they just they let me put down as whatever I want. Right. And then, like, if it, you know, gets approved, then I have to pay for it. Yeah. I, have, I pay for it the day that they text me and, yeah. and stuff. So, anyways, it's that kind of a... funky. A weird, weird looks suppressor. Like, looks like gears. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Jet turbines. Yeah. yeah. And that's that was kind of the idea, is that <laughs> try and redirect all the gases, like, a bunch of times so that it, uh, yeah. you know, slows it out or slows it down. And I'm assuming you haven't shot any of them yet. I have not shot it yet, but uh, I did. The reason I got these was because Evan, another one of those. Man, Evan, you've talked me into getting like my 10 millimeter Rock Island, the, this OSS can or these OSS cans. And we shot his 30 cal. And I had heard so much uh, kind of like people pooping on the, the OSS cans, mm-hmm. their first gen ones, that I was like, oh, I'm never going to buy one of those. But then I shot Evan's. It has a different different tone to it. Sure. Yeah. It's like a thunk. It's kind yeah. of weird when we were shooting the, the bunny farts, but it sounded good, so I was like, oh, I'll, I'll try these these 5.56 five, ones out. And 5.56 five, is no, notoriously a bad cartridge to suppress as far as, like, trying to get it quiet. Right. But, you know, if I could shoot my AR without, you know, hearing protection, that's good enough. Yeah. Well, and you can use it on that new bolt gun, too. Oh, yeah. Well, it's nice. What I really like about them is that you can you can put them on your AR-15 and you can shoot a mag through them and you're not going to be coughing and tearing up. Oh, yeah. The, there's, like, no back pressure or very little back oh, pressure. It's nice. really nice for that, so yeah. They're not super gassy on the way back, you know, which most traditional baffled cans are. Mm-hmm. But. And it's been really nice because, like, you know, I have mine and I'll throw it on my 6.5 Creedmoor, my 308, my bolt guns, all of them. But especially with the AR-15, you know, I didn't have to buy any special buffer, buffer tubes, bolt carrier groups, or mm-hmm. I didn't have to buy adjustable gas blocks or anything. I just threw them on there and just shot. Nice. So that was the biggest selling point for me is I didn't have to fiddle with anything. Because I'm yeah. like you, I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I was lazy. <laughs> oh, we know. <laughs> so the other can I got is a really... It's, I guess it's one of a kind because it was made by the same guy who, who did the, the machine work for my high point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he, anyways, the grip he, zone and bang zone? Yeah. And he, <laughs> he, he threaded, he threaded my, my high point barrel and stuff. And anyways, he, he made this welded titanium can. Feel how light that thing is. Ooh. And that's a, so it's a 6.5 can, and he said it would work for a 270 also, 277. Those are pretty nice welds. Yeah. Titanium is not easy to weld. Yeah. Yeah, read the front if, there. Yeah. <laughs> if I can. It says. Front towards dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so the cool thing about this is he threaded this can to take the Silencer Co. threadings. So okay. that rear piece is actually uh uh, I got that. It's a thread fixed mount thread adapter for my hybrid 46 can. Mm. So all those are the same. So I can use that to change, you know, the the threading on it. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, and the end caps can also swap out. So he did, go- like, a really good job on making this. Yeah. And I'm, a, I'm super The machine ex- work on it is yeah. really nice. Yeah. He actually, uh, if you look at the baffles, they're, they're pretty pretty cool looking yeah he ended up selling it to a the baffle design to another company so oh really yeah i probably can't mention who who yeah who has it now but uh 
But yeah, so I have like a one of a kind That's unique pretty cool. suppressor that he built for me. Yeah. So, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, and the other suppressor I got, one of them I left at home because it was boring. It was just a, <laughs> it was a SIG SRD 22X, so another 22 suppressor. A SIG? Yeah. Oh, okay. But this other one right here is an Odin, Odin Works Baja 556. And this one, you can see it's the. I like how it has like the little wrench flats, you know, mm -hmm. looks like a nut on, the, on yeah. the end, but it is drilled for a pin and weld build. Oh. So the reason I bought this is because I wanted to try and do a pin and weld build and maybe use that upper as my home defense rifle. Oh, okay. So that, you know, yeah. so you shoot it in the, the house. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It bad, bad guy won't wake up the kids. So <laughs> yeah. anyways, that's important. I, with the length of this, I think it's only five inches long. Mm -hmm. I doubt that it suppresses really good, but I it think looks cool. it, it does look yeah, cool. That's the and I think, <laughs> I think, you know, with the size of it and having it sit under a wider handguard yeah. and do, with the pin and weld build, I think it yeah. would be, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. I Just, think that yeah. that could look super cool. So, nice. yeah, so that's that's it. What I got, oh, I had two OSS of the same suppressor, so, mm. yeah. But I did some other stuff, but I, I think that's that's all I want to talk about okay. today. For our news story. Because we haven't done a news story in a long time, and I liked this one. It starts off a little bit weird. Just as a uh, heads up, if you're writing an article and you're using acronyms, you should at least one time in your article explain what that acronym stands for. <laughs> that being said, let's get into our article. <laughs> this is from Brownsboro, Texas. So uh, you guys in, near Brownsboro, Texas, you can tell me exactly what all this means. Brownsboro ISD's campuses are open again, according to BISD Superintendent Kerry Hampton. I'm assuming this is like some kind of a school. A school. Uh, yeah, I don't know I if it's assume. a university. I don't know if it's a grammar school. I don't know if it's a high school. You're going to find out it's an animal shelter. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> the city has canceled the search, Hampton said. For a brief time Thursday morning, the exterior doors to the BISD campuses in Brownsboro were locked and students were prevented from going outside, Hampton said. She explained that the district was not technically on lockdown. We just locked all the doors, but we're not on lockdown. <laughs> um, said, she said students were allowed to move about freely inside the BISD building, but the doors were locked. So they can move around freely even though they were locked. Even though they were locked in. Yes. I see. And now we're going to explain why. Brownsboro Chief, uh, Police Chief Danny Ford said the BISD exterior doors were locked because they arrested one suspect and law enforcement officers from several different agencies were searching the town for a female suspect. The female was allegedly with a man who broke the glass on a home's front door to gain entry. Ford said the homeowner who was armed with an AR-15 rifle, met the suspect, suspect after he broke into the home. Hey, how's it going? I live here. Do you like my rifle? <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine that's how his introduction went. <laughs> <laughs> the homeowner held the suspect at gunpoint until, until police arrived at the scene. The man was charged with burglary of a habitation and was taken to the Henderson County Jail. The BPD, I know what that means. That's the Brownsboro Police Department. Okay. <laughs> the chief said the burglary suspect was not armed. So he had a female with him. And what does a good accomplice do? Run. Runs away yeah. and leaves you behind. Um, so they were unable to locate the female. And so they were searching for her. That's why That's the, why the local lockdown. place was on lockdown. But I, I like that the guy had his AR-15 politely introduced himself to the burglar as the homeowner and why don't you have a seat right there for a little while somebody's coming to get you <laughs> <laughs> your, your ride will be here shortly <laughs> your ride can either be a police <laughs> or, or an ambulance yeah or the mortician you decide, <laughs> yeah. you decide. Yeah. your next moves decide that yeah choose carefully and i think you know how many stories like this have we read where the the homeowner confronts them with a gun and it, they just keep coming. They don't, you know. Yeah. It's always a handgun. 
apparently handguns aren't intimidating enough. You point a black rifle at them, and they'll sit down and behave. Yeah. Changes their mind pretty quick. Yeah. Well, I can't use my 50 BMG because yeah. it will go through all of them and their vehicle. Yeah. But that one is a pretty intimidating It is gun. intimidating. If Maybe if you just sat it in the front window, <laughs> just nobody like... would even bother. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, don't, don't go <laughs> Not worth it. Not yeah. worth it. Anyway, that's our news story. All right. <coughs> Gosh, sorry. Okay, we are just about out of time. That's but okay. We can for, talk for a little bit about yeah, what you want to discuss. For the topic, and I guess we don't have like a, a huge topic to top, talk about with it, but we're going to talk about noise when shooting. Mm-hmm. So I ended up getting some new ear protection. I have not tested it, so I can't talk about it too much. Evan has gotten the same, got the same yeah. set. I actually used them during my match. Nice. Yeah. Before I tested them. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then is also about the top reasons why you should buy a suppressor and shoot suppressed. Yeah. Because then you don't need hearing protection. So here's a story. <laughs> a lovely for day. those of you who have been listening to whatever podcast for a while, back in the Gun Dudes days, you remember Travis... From, from the gun dudes. Way back when, he's in England, this is like in the 80s, and he goes into a, a gun store, or a store that sells guns in England. This was back before they were super Oh, uptight. yeah, okay. So they actually did sell guns They, back they then. did have guns. And he walked in, and he's like, everything had suppressors on it. Oh, yeah. And he, he's talking to the clerk, and he's like, you guys can have suppressors here? And the clerk looked at him like he was a complete moron and was like, yeah, that's the polite thing to do. Like, yeah. that's, duh. That's how it is in countries outside of the United States. Right, which, is, which are like yeah. a- absolute freaks about gun control. But they understand. At least being polite. Yeah. Well, of course you're going to put a muffler on the thing. That's just the polite thing to do. Here, no, you are you are an assassin and you just want to kill people silently. <laughs> Hollywood has played too much into oh, this yeah, decision. Yeah. Um, well, you think about most of those politicians against guns. It's like, where do they get their gun knowledge from? The movies. Oh, yeah. That's and what so they, yeah. they don't want people running around going... Zoop, zoop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With their revolver. With their revolver. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. So. Yeah. So I don't own any suppressors at yeah. this point in time because I really have an issue. It's the principle, more than anything, of paying for the privilege to own it. I just, a safety device. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, it really doesn't sit well with me but when i have gone and shot with you and we've all been shooting suppressed it is such a pleasant experience yeah it just is it makes it a hundred times more enjoyable and especially if you're out there for you know an even if you're out there for an hour or more Mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference in comfort because i don't care what kind of hearing protection you're using after about an hour, it really starts to annoy your ears, or yeah. pressing you know your muffs, pressing your glasses into the side of your yeah. head. And, and, yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, because you get that uh, kind of uh, what is it called when your ears start hurting from the ear muffs and stuff. Pain. Are you thinking of tinnitus? <laughs> <sighs> no, I'm tired right now. You know, my brain functions are shutting down. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, no, and, but even yeah. even using earplugs, your the, yeah. your your ear canals just start to kind of ache after a while, and you know when I've done matches or if I've been out shooting for a long period of time, I'll switch. It's like okay, the muffs are coming off, the plugs are going in, you know, just to give my ears a break, but yeah. do something different. But yeah, what's but, your what's your guys? You guys shoot suppressors well, a lot like, more than I, I do. To, when I went to that match, I wished more people had run suppressors. There was a bunch of guys that ran muzzle brakes, and when they were doing, oh that, yeah, geez. when they were shooting, I was just like, all right, I'm going over here. Yep. I go back to where the cars were parked, and I'd sit over there because I didn't want to be anywhere near it because yeah. it's just miserable. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah. it's like since since getting suppressors for my guns, like this one doesn't have a suppressor mount on it right now because it's my, you know, my lightweight. So I just have the A2 flash hider on it. But every other one of my guns has a suppressor mount on it because yeah. that's all I want to do now is just shoot suppressed because it is so much more enjoyable. You know, if we threw this OSS 
five five six can on your gun, it'd probably double the weight. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is not a lightweight well, can. <laughs> that that's the only my only real complaint about the OSS is the weight to them. But that being said, the fact that I don't have to fiddle with gas blocks or anything makes it worth makes it worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it really does suck. Like even if you're if you're just out bunny hunting or plinking or whatever, even if just one person isn't suppressed and everyone else is, it just that means everybody's got to wear ear protection. You yeah, know? that just means you're, that's the guy that's not going to be invited back next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're you're right. You're yeah. right. But it, yeah, like you said, at a match or something like that, it's almost pointless to to run suppressed because if everybody isn't, it's yeah. I guess if you're the only one running a stage, you don't have to wear your protection. There was one yeah. guy that was running a, a pistol CZ brand with a brake on it. Hmm. A pistol? So 5.56. Five, oh, okay. Pistol 5.56. Five, five, so it's like a 10-inch barrel with a brake. I'm like, oh, oh gosh. You hate yourself, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Those, those and short 5.56s five, five, <laughs> are yeah. loud. Okay, so the pros for buying a suppressor or shooting suppressed. You can shoot without hearing protection. One of the other things is it acts as a really good muzzle brake. Yeah. Yeah. So with my Savage Hog Hunter, it, when I throw on that big old titanium can from uh, what's it? What's it? Liberty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That Liberty suppressor. It's it's like an 11 inch titanium suppressor. It it makes my 308 bolt action with full power loads like shootable from I think. My daughter at the time when she was like 10 so she was laying down shooting my 308 out at 300 yards and well my six year old without without problems of the recoil yeah wow and i have my savage model 10 308 my six-year-old shot with a suppressor on it and he he kept going back for more he shot two or three mags before i told him oh I'm, we're not doing anymore <laughs> like, whoa, 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 i can't down. afford this <laughs> yeah you just gotta take the suppressor off and then have him shoot a couple and he'll be done yeah but yeah so it acts as a good muzzle brake device reducing recoil yeah and it's just yeah they're they're great are there any other reasons that you can think of that well, I think shooting. like even like there are some guns, you know, when you put a suppressor on, they're still not hearing safe. But even then, having the suppressor on it, it's a night and day difference because at the end of the day, you're still going to have the concussive force from like the unsuppressed gun. That's going to, I mean, you got a lot of water in your head. That sound wave propagating through the water in your head causes problems, headaches. And if you're anybody who has like bad sinuses, like I do, <laughs> you know, shooting like your 50 cal, right? Oh, yeah, that cleared my sinuses out. <laughs> if you've got, like, a stuffy nose and you start shooting those, you'll go home and you'll have a headache for three days. So having yeah. a suppressor, if you're anybody, like, even if this is an odd way to say it, but if you have sinus problems, a suppressor is worth its weight in gold. <laughs> yeah. So that I takes out some of that concussion. It does. It, it, it makes it so I can shoot my guns all day and not have to worry about it. Yeah. And a lot of times, Evan and I will start the shooting day just suppressed. Just mm-hmm. quiet guns first, and then at the end of the day, we take off our hearing protection and stuff because, it's, you know, pushing on your ears and stuff. Fatigue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get the, like, ear fatigue and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so then we finish with the bunny farts with the 30 cal suppressors, and it's just yeah, it's just a fun way to start and stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, that's the other benefit is when you take out new shooters. Yeah, I was going to say that. It, they don't have to wear hearing protection, so you can they can hear commands yep. and everything that's going on when you're like, hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. Well, and it know. takes, it takes, so my wife hates to shoot because of the noise and the recoil. She'll shoot the air guns all day long, and she'll have fun doing it because it removes those two things. And a, and a good suppressor with the right loads will do the same thing for a regular powder burner firearm and and. Like you said, for a new shooter, it takes away a couple of those factors that naturally scare people yeah. about guns. Yeah. You know, and so it's it's a great way to introduce people. Yeah. And then, you know, shoot, shooting, right shooting the with start. the, yeah, shooting <laughs> with the, that large group of boys, it was nice because I didn't have to round up hearing protection for everybody. Yeah. It was just like, oh, just bring eye protection. You just have a million dollars worth of suppressors So you just have instead. like, you know, six, 20 rimfire suppressors and, or seven or whatever. And I'm then, sorry, honey. I have to do this for the boys. It's for the children. Yeah. Buy suppressors for, for the, the children. children. <laughs> 
Don't you care about the children? Yeah. Okay, so now what are the downsides to shooting suppressed? Two hundred dollar tax stamp. Two hundred dollar stamp. <laughs> okay, so stamp the cost. Tax. That's really yeah. about it. Okay, the other one it, is. It does add. It does add a little bit of weight and bulk to the to the gun. Yeah. Depending I, on what you're doing with it, that the biggest could down, be an issue. The biggest downside that I've noticed is. Whenever you add something to the end of the barrel, like rifle-wise, you are changing barrel harmonics. Mm. And what that does is it changes your point of impact. Oh, okay. So your point of impact is going to shift. No matter how nice of a suppressor you have, there will be a point of impact shift. How much does it change, typically? It, it just depends. Like Depends on the gun. and If you threw yeah. one of those suppressors on this pencil barrel, it would it probably would droop about five inches down. Oh, wow. But I throw one of those on my 6.5 Creedmoor with a heavy barrel, it's almost nothing. It's like half an inch for okay. me. Yeah, so it, it all depends on the rifle, the cartridge, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And also the baffle design. And if it's like one of those designs that has a serviceable baffle stack, then... Every time you put that together, if it's not in line the same exact way every time, it will throw it's it off It's going to be different. Just a little bit different. Interesting. So that's okay. You almost have to re-zero it. Now, okay. I will say, I used to own more tw- 22 pistols mm-hmm. that were threaded, and now I do not. Because? And the reason was they had the, the thinner threaded barrel that required like a, an adapter mm-hmm. to make it half by 28. And so you put the little adapter on and then the suppressor on, and I was getting uh, the point of impact shift. It was so bad that I'm like, this isn't worth it. And yeah. so I sold those guns, and now I just have my Ruger Mark III, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. And, and like it has a bull barrel, and it, the point of impact shift is like yeah, so small more. that it's, it's it doesn't even matter. Yeah, it's yeah. insignificant. And. Yeah, I, I was shooting that gun with a red dot on it with the suppressor, lobbing some, some 22s out and hitting steel targets at 300 yards. And Jeez. It was, it was pretty fun. Hmm. But, but yeah, so I, I have that gun, and I think that's the only 22 pistol I, I have now. Really? Because all the others, they like I had a Ruger SR-22. It hmm. shot amazing. Yeah. And then as soon as I put guns. the suppressor on, it shot like three feet to the right. Wow. And I was like, I can't. I can't have this. Yeah. Like, this is this is worthless like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll just drift the sight, just off the slide. Yeah. Yeah, and the same thing. <laughs> Make an adapter I so had, it hangs off the side of the slide. I had one of those 1911 22s, the GSG 1911. Oh, 22. yeah. It was actually a really good gun. Yeah. Shot great. My son has one of those. I, I put the suppressor on, <laughs> off to the right, like, or left or whatever it was. Like, huh. It was about, like, three or four feet. I'm like, At okay. At what distance? Uh, I don't know, like, uh, like 20 feet, 20 yards. Tw- uh, 20 yards. Okay. So that's, that's pretty at. significant. Yeah. It's like when you aim and you shoot and it's that far off, your iron sights are no good anymore. Right. And so that's, so point of impact shift is something that is, you know, you need to consider. Okay. And what's kind of interesting too, is like, I will have, I have a couple guns, like my Savage Hog Hunter. Mm-hmm. I only shoot it suppressed. Yeah with a specific suppressor mm-hmm. so i sighted it in with the suppressor on right and i just throw it on every time and then it's and i imagine for a lot of people that's kind of going to be the way it is yeah starting out though you you know you'll have uh, yeah. one, one suppressor that, 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 that does, kind of rotates through then, everything yeah that's yeah. what i have is i have my one that i rotate around G- kind of going back a little bit though one thing i will say as a positive for the suppressor is every single gun that I put a suppressor on, I've had a point of impact shift, but I've also had my group shot group size shrink. So yeah. if you're oh, a PRS shooter, instead of buying like a tunable gas brake and making all your friends hate you, <laughs> you can just buy a suppressor huh. and yeah. keep your friends. <laughs> and so what I've heard too is that a lot of times so one of the things that people think, I don't know, I think it's mostly because of video games or something, <laughs> or maybe it has something to do with the old, like, suppressors with wipes, mm. is that uh, they, you know, they think that velocity is going to go down. Yeah. But usually it stays the same, or if anything, it goes up slightly. Hmm. But what uh, a lot of people notice is that their groups tighten, and whether it's because of, you know, lower recoil and, you know, the benefits, less concussion, yeah. or it's just that the gases behind the bullet are released slower. Yeah. 
And so that could also be the reason their groups tighten up. But a lot of people notice that it, their groups do tighten up when they shoot suppress. So cool. a lot of PRS shooters, com- competitors, mm-hmm. will have a suppressor on. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that was my favorite pro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. But yeah. Well, good to know. The process now is actually not too bad. Like if you go to a... a Things have gotten a lot smoother yeah, and easier. It hasn't forms. gotten cheaper though. Not cheaper, but there are some good options out there. You're still going to have the cost of the suppressor plus tax stamp, $200. Right. But well, The thing is the suppressors are so expensive because there's not as many people getting into it because of the tax stamps. So the research for them to pay off like their designs is so much more. Yeah. yeah. But That's you're it. getting newer companies coming in who are like, I don't care about whatever. I'm just going to make some cheaper suppressors. Mm-hmm. And some of the older companies are making cheaper suppressors. I found a... I can't remember if it was a, I think it was a Yankee Hill uh, 9mm subgun suppressor. And they have it at Gunny's for like 380 bucks or something. Wow, that's and really like, affordable. That's actually exactly what I want is a dedicated one for like my 9mm. Yeah. You know. Your little AR9. AR9s. Like, yeah, I love shooting those suppressed <laughs> and, you know. Did so, you, was it your, no, it wasn't your AKV that you sent back the AK9. It was a different AK. Oh, Yeah. The Sorry. Palmetto, I forgot to talk about that, but yeah, sent my Palmetto AK back because it had issues and they replaced the front trunnion, the bolt, the carrier, the bear, I think the barrel. It was basically <laughs> they give you a, they a basically brand new gun. You back your grip. <laughs> yeah, I think the grip and trigger and stock. Kept the same furniture and put everything else yeah, new so in I need it. Yeah, so I need to, we need to go out and test that again and see how it, how it goes. But nice. Anyways, I think that's, we're out of time. We but, are. Yeah, I just wanted to mention real fast. Uh, I should Evan and I should have like a review on these uh, GS Ghost Strike Extreme. They're the Axel 2.0 Ghost Strike. Yeah, Axel 2.0 Ghost Strike. The Bluetooth kind of earbud hearing protection. Yeah, nice. electronic hearing protection, and uh, see how that goes. Evan's already used his. Yeah, and, I used mine in the match. And I liked it there. I didn't like it before, but we'll go over that later. <laughs> yeah, when we do a review. So excited to try these out. You know, combination of reducing noise with the uh, stuff you shove in your ears and then stuff you shove on the end of a barrel. Yep. So make your guns quieter. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Really nice. All and right. Until next time, stay safe, have fun. Be nice to people. And thanks for Buckle listening. Up. Buckle up. <laughs> All right. Later. Getting bumpy. <laughs>